Facebook's going mad. Right. Um, okay thank you okay so we'll start with our welcome rewards for period two so far 61 people could hardly fit your names on the screen tonight um all receiving welcome rewards one two and three for those of you that don't know you're very new on then welcome rewards are our free um sort of incentives from the company i think claire's going to mention what welcome rewards are in the online induction and what you need to do to achieve them so first of all i just want to recognize everybody on this list we've got sarah leanne sophie georgina jasmine fiona elaine grace monica debbie jane sarah kelly philippa kaylee rebecca laura natalie lauren mandy jane Paul, Becky, Michael, Amy, Jeffrey, Fiona, Vicky, Natalie, Ashley, Dana, Danielle, Diane, Rebecca, Joanne, Nikki, Kathy, Claire, Cheryl, Danielle, and Provan. Um, we've also got Victoria, Lauren, Samantha, Kelly, Annette, Jade, Kelly, Kate, Rebecca, Tyler J, Becky, Lauren. Sheila, Nicola and Patricia all receiving their welcome rewards one, which is absolutely fantastic. Welcome rewards one and two achieved by Autumn. So absolutely well done, Autumn, on achieving both of your welcome rewards. Um, we've got then welcome rewards two is Alexandra, Gillian, so Siobhan, um, absolutely fantastic start to the business, Siobhan. And Claire was telling me earlier that you've already done your 10% uh, this period off to an absolute flying start. Um, well on track for your 13% this period. So um, absolutely lovely. And we met you at the conference, Siobhan. So I think you know, um, you know what you're doing. So make sure you track yourself now this week to get that bigger bonus paid into your bank. Absolutely fantastic to hear that you're on track for, for that next bonus. Um, we've got Roxanne and Deborah um, Underhill getting their welcome reward too. And then I think it's welcome reward three. Is it Kate Bancroft? Can't quite see at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so Kate Bancroft, uh, welcome reward three as well. So absolutely, um, you know, amazing. Lots and lots of you achieving these incentives. Lots of fantastic um, support in your sponsors and your upline in helping you to achieve these. So, you know, absolutely well done to all of you. Next slide, Claire. I'm trying to turn the slide and it won't work. <laughs> Me too. Okay, so um, we've got then our top 20 retailers for period two so far. Um, myself and Andrew have just picked Beverly Allen. Um, Beverly was took over us last week. So uh, with £1,712, you know, myself and Andrew have an established customer base that we've had for the past 11 years in the business. So I want to say well done, Beverly, because I know that you're brand new in the business and to be getting these sort of sales is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, in second place, we've got Beverly then with 1612. We've got John and Carol Woodward with 1440. We've got Peter Hooker in fifth place with 963. We've got Paul Grime with 944. We've got Roxanne with 893. We've got Kate with 875. We've got um, Joe Warman, uh, 847. Well done, Joe. Uh, we've got Sarah Jane and Carl with 806. Now, all these in the blue have all already done personally their 10% bonus, which is absolutely amazing. In the red, you're already in the thousand club. So come on here, you can push to get yourself in the thousand club. Um, you know, leading the way from the front um, with your personal retails, always, you know, fantastic way to build your business. So then we've got just, just short, and I know I think Karen's actually put an order on today. Um, Karen with 763, so I'm absolutely certain first full period she's going to have, you know, first full period in, in getting stuck in with the business, definitely going to on, on track to get your 10%, 10 
put my teeth back in 10 percent bonus karen so well done and we've got autumn just short of 10 percent. so you know keep yourself tracked there's siobhan with her leading the way with her team 752 rachel and james 637 well done guys um jillian um I'm really looking forward to meeting at the Momentum meeting on Saturday, eight, uh, 580. We've got um, Natalie and Mark with um, six, 567. Emma and Mark with 562. Claire and Mark with 555. Harriet and Alistair, who are over in Lanzarote at the moment, with 547 and Jen and Steve with 554. I've also had a little message from Annette. Um, she's put an order on today for 116 pounds. It unfortunately hasn't gone on the figures, but she really was pushing to get in the top 20 this week. So I'm sure it will have just pushed you into the top 20. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite showing on the figures. So well done, um, Annette. Also, just to mention, I've got some, um, Welcome rewards that weren't on the list um, because they've all received them today. So we've got Fiona Jackson um, in Kira's team over in Ireland. Absolutely fantastic start, Fiona. Uh, well done, just following the lead from Kira there. We've got Elaine, I think it's McDuff, with her, felt, her first welcome reward as well with uh, Chris and Claire. And then we've got a Lisa Helm, a Kelly Ford, and a Laminta. I think it is Toma. Um, absolutely well done. So I don't. We think we'd have even had room to fit you on the page. So absolutely uh, fantastic, guys. Um, to see to see so many people hitting those welcome rewards. So sorry, I, I just forgotten. Yeah, I've written myself a little note here. So well done. Um, next slide, Claire. Thank you. So the matrix group so far for the period, this is team sales now. The previous slide was just personal sales. So this is the matrix group as a whole. We've done £47,358 worth of sales. And then in first and second place, jointly, we've got Chris and Claire and Helen and Paul with £38,238. Oh, Actually, I've not got that right. They've got first place. They've just pictured. They've obviously put a little order on. Uh, Claire and Chris in second place with 38,199. Rachel and James in third place with 14,279. Hannah uh, in fourth place with 7,351. Claire and Mark we're on track for gold, guys. Well done. Um, 6,462. Joe Warman, look at this. This is absolutely amazing, Joe. Definitely on track there for gold. You know, big push now. Come on, Team Titanium, get behind Joe. All push now to get your bonuses. It'd be lovely to have a brand new gold baby so soon in the year. Um, with 6,205. Then in joint seventh and eighth place, we've got Kirby and Ian with Harriet and Alistair with 4,775. We've got Sarah, oh my God, Sarah, on track for, <coughs> excuse me, let's have a drink. On track for your 18%, go 18, baby. <laughs> um, come on, let's get that. First, first matrix group, go 18 qualifier. Who's it going to be? Oh, come on, you're nearly there. We've got Kathy and Jeff with 2,000. Oh, getting a bit emotional now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've had a bit of a call off Kathy today, so I just wanted to let you know. Jeff's not been too good, so I thought it might be nice if we could do a little collection for anybody that knows Jeff. Um, he's been in hospital for a couple of days. He's having a few little problems. So Kathy and Jeff have been with us a long while in the business. Um, sorry. 
Jeff's one of our oldest team members in his 80s, um, you know, so I just I think maybe at the Momentum meeting, maybe we could just have a little collection yeah, for those of you who know Kathy and Jeff. Sorry. In 11th place, we've got Bev and Paul's story. Absolutely amazing, Bev and Paul, because I know, Bev, you know, you've had a major surgery and um, you know, Rachel's been telling me all about your work ethic, you know, when you've been kind of, um, you know, having such major surgery that you've continued to do what you can do. You just, they're all the time supporting your team, you know, um, it's just absolutely fantastic. I know you're getting back on your feet now and you're getting back out and doing your customer base. So that's absolutely fantastic to hear that you're now on the road to recovery. And, you know, that's one of the lovely things, I think, about this business, that it's so flexible. We all have our odd challenges, don't we, that's going on in life. So well done for keeping going. Sorry, guys. Oh, got myself in the right mess. Don't mean to carry Sinead, on. Anyway, right? I'm all right. Sinead and Darren. Oh, go on, Claire. Can you do it? I mean, yeah, of course I can, yeah. Right. So, joint 12th and 13th place, uh, Sinead and Darren and Francis and Ryan with 3,021 euros. Then we have in 14th place, Beverly Allen with 2,230. Then we have in 15th place, Kate Bancroft with flying brand new Kate. She's doing absolutely brilliant. £1,897. Uh, Jane and Andrew Hogan, um, again, really pleased for these. Back up there, £1,837. Well done, Jane. You're having a great one. Kelly Martin, again, another one. Well done. You're really pushing £1,795. Stacey Roberts, £1,787. Kara and Tom, €2,152. Well done. And Stacey. Mangnal, I never know how to pronounce this, £1,633. Well done, that's brilliant, everyone. Okay, I've composed myself now. Sorry, guys. Uh, top recruiters now for period two, um, 2018. In total, we've recruited 166 new team members now. Period two, last year, we did 150 in total. So it's just absolutely amazing to see so many new people joining the business. Um, leading the way, uh, going for gold, Jo Warman. I think she's on track for recruiting one a day at this rate. I don't think I've ever seen anybody recruit 24 people in one period. And we've got another week, to, well, nearly it's another week 30. to go. Could have been 30, tell you. It's going to be, that's mental, Joe. <laughs> wow. Uh, Rachel and James as well. Just absolutely awesome, uh, Rachel and James. 16 new team members. I'm just absolutely loving as well. I've not done the um, top new business from this, but looking at the new business sales that's coming through, it's just phenomenal. Um, Claire and Mark, back, you know, back in it absolutely um and it's showing in your business the new business that's coming through for you claire and mark you're finding some some fantastic people and back up there with your team figures so absolutely fantastic to see 13 new team members chris and claire 10 um it just shows there's so many people out there that want to join this amazing opportunity bev and paul you know we've just been talking about bev and paul and, you know, whilst she's been recuperating, she's been recruiting. So a bit of R&R. &R. Absolutely fantastic. Nine new team members. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we've got ourselves with uh, Emma Hunter and Mark with seven. Sarah and Carl with nine, uh, six, sorry. Um, Jane and Andrew with uh, Jay and Lee with five. Then we've got Harriet and Alistair Jane recruiting and while they're on their holiday. Pardon? It was Jane Andrew, not Jane Lee. We've got Jane Lee underneath. Oh, sorry, yeah. did you not say it? Sorry, I got mixed up. Jane there. and Andrew and then Jane Lee. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 
names do blur into one. And then we've got Kelly Martin, Danielle Jen and Roxanne, all with four. Absolutely fantastic. Then with three, we've got Hannah, Kira, Angela and Kate. Um, with two, we've got Francis, Keith, uh, Janine and Beverly, Alan and Rishi. We've got um, them with one, Jessica and Mark, Natalie, Rebecca, Cheryl, Susan, Annette, Stacey, Claire, Jen, Julia, Ross, Tracy, Jenna, Mike. Sarah, Amanda, I don't know how you pronounce that, sorry, uh, Deborah, Gillian, Autumn, Michael, I'm not sure, is there any other ones at the bottom there? Kelly and Leanne. Kelly and Leanne as well, oh my god, absolutely awesome. We've got 262 new team members already in 2018, which is just phenomenal. Um, okay, so next slide. Dates for your diary then. Okay, so um, we've got, for those of you that are new and on here for the first time, we have our Matrix um, Motivation Monday every Monday. Um, as it says here, we've got our online induction on our 10 pillars training today. Um, next week, we are looking for somebody to do a testimonial. And we've got then our next word, sponsor workshop, which we'll be following up on dealing with objections and things next week so there's always training on here that's going to help you to build your business into momentum um, tomorrow it is the vista group opportunity presentation it is also the team webinar uh, you know it's a great honor i have been asked to speak for the company webinar tomorrow so please plug in and support me um is very very nervous actually oh, very very nervous <laughs> yeah. really Shut up. <laughs> and then we've got the Vista Group Leadership and life tra Lifestyle Training on Thursday at half past eight. Um, we've got then our Momentum Meeting on um, Saturday. So if you've not been before, it's at the Preston Brook um, Church Hall in Runcorn. Um, we do have a momentum group. We've got lots of people coming now from all across the network where we're working together. Absolutely fantastic agenda. I'm really, really excited uh, about our next meeting. We have the lovely Adele DiCasso, who's going to be sharing some fantastic training with us. I think Jo Warman is coming to join us and we'll be doing her testimonial for us. Um, we've got Rachel Folger, the queen of getting people off to a fast start, is going to be sharing some fantastic training on getting your team, um, get your team going. We've also got uh, Chris, who's going to be sharing some training also. So it's going to be a fantastic lineup. It's great to get along to the meetings in person, you know, where you get to rub shoulders, you get to chat, we go and have a sizzle in the pub later. And I do believe it's a very special lady's birthday. So, and they're all going out nightclubbing afterwards. So, bring along your glad rags <laughs> because they're off to Stockton Heath. Uh, going to be partying all night, I believe. So, uh, a team that learns together and has fun together, that's what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> so, make sure that if you want to bring a change of clothes or whatever that you do, but we will be going back to the pub. But you let us know if you want to join us and who's coming, and we can organise everything then from there. Okay, so uh, just click through. I think there's a few other bits on here. Met the momentum meeting we've talked about just so that you can put the dates in your diary we've got our summer showcase on the 2nd of june that's at cheltenham Racecourse. that's our company event our company showcase we've got the christmas showcase and gala dinner on the 1st of september at the icc in birmingham um absolutely fantastic day and then we have a fantastic gala dinner in the evening so um if you want to join us book your hotels early make sure that you've got a place just click it one more time we tend to stay at the premier inn on broad street on canal side Hello. um yeah and, um, claire went to book that like she went to book it ages ago when we left the other showcase and it was full Are we joking? For, the, for the night of the gala dinner oh right okay they're gonna have to maybe find somewhere else then Ooh. Mm. I've never known it to be full. It was on our way home from the last showcase, January showcase. 
she was booking it in the car and she said, look, it's full. She got it up on a phone and it's full. It's bank oh. on the weekend, so maybe it's that. Yeah, 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 maybe it's something to do with that. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll find somewhere else then and we'll There's let loads you know. of hotels anyway, isn't there? Yeah, there are loads. Oh, yeah. Definitely. When is that for Clay? Which for the one's gala for? Dinner. The premiere. Yeah, for the gala dinner for the premiere. Okay. We'll have a look, can't we? Andrew, mute yourself, lovey, because you're making a rattly noise. Oh, sorry. Uh-huh. Mark's just checked and it's unavailable. Okay. The cop okay. Thorn was right next near it, isn't it? The cop thorn. Mm -hmm. that, that, one. that was available. Right, okay. We'll do a little bit of searching and we'll find somewhere then for us all to stay. Thanks, Claire. Right, okay. I am going to pass over to um, Claire now, who is, you know, absolutely fantastic at going through the online induction. Um, put these slides together really to help you, even, you know, whether you're new or whether you've been doing this for a while, I'm absolutely certain there's gonna be something that you're gonna pick up from tonight's training. So um, I'm gonna mute myself and pass over to Claire to do our Matrix Group Online induction. Thank you, Helen. Sorry, I was just plugging, plugging my laptop in there. It just flashed up, saying my battery was about to go off. <laughs> I didn't know it wasn't. Right, sorry. So our online induction, okay. So obviously this is for anyone one, if you're brand new, then this is great for you to understand our system, but also as a refresh uh, for yourself for selling online or for you for teaching new team members online, it's good to keep yourself uh, up to date with it all. So this is our system. This is how we get people off to a, to a, a fast start when they join us. So the first thing we always advise you to do is you've got your group set up, which either your sponsor's done that for you or you've set that up only takes a minute but set up and you need to get in there at least 15 pictures of the products before you add any friends now we recommend that they're up to date um top selling products that we know are in stock so what we're doing is in the picks for you group on the pinned post we're updating it every week it's always got this week's top sellers that are in stock so we advise that you go straight for them really because we know that they sell well we know that they're in stock products and put them straight to, into your group once you've done that, you're then going to start adding your friends and family to the group. And something that we recommend you do is that you ask your friends for some help. So if you, if you can message your own friends, like not just everyone on Facebook, your own personal friends, and ask them to help you out by commenting and liking on a few products in your group, even better if you decide to buy something for you. But what this does is it creates interest from other people. It gets other people looking at your group and wanting and um, maybe buy something for themselves. It also shows people when they come into your group and look for the first time that there is interest in what you're selling. It's getting people seeing that people are liking and commenting. So we recommend as well that you're gonna you're gonna post three products in every group that you're in, okay, each day, spread out throughout the day, up to you want to build it up to around 40 to 50 groups a day. Now most people when they join are not in that many selling groups. If you are, then great. Um, but you need to build that up. So, you know, just post in whatever you've got, three products, each, three different products spread out throughout the day. You want to post three to five products a day in your own selling group, okay? And two to three interaction posts a week in your own selling group as well. We're going to go through why they're important in a minute. The next thing we want you to do is you're going to write a list of five people that you're going to give the catalogues to. So you're going to get sent five catalogues. And you need to have a list of the first five, then the next five, then the next five. And really, your five catalogs are probably what's going to get you your first lot of sales if you use it right and you get them out to people. And people are not interested, then you don't give them to. So you want to find out who wants the catalog. And then you want to get it quickly back to get back out again. Um, as people are then starting to buy from you, what you want to do is you want to fill them into your selling group. And it takes about six months to build a customer base. And then eventually you get to a point where you only need to post into your own selling group because it just builds up all the time. Okay, but you have to do you have to like keep finding buyers and getting them in your group to do that, which we're gonna go through how to do that as well. Uh, another good one is to have a review post um in your group and keep it bumped up to the top. So if if you can get people that are gonna buy off you to comment with 
some things that they bought and saying, you know, either commenting about the product or putting a picture of the product. And if you've not really sold anything yet, you're quite new to this, then go and get a picture of pics for you that someone's used at home, like a product one, and put your own product review in there. Say, um, one of the customers has bought this lovely bedding set. Doesn't it look nice? You may not have sold that bedding set. That's fine. It's come from the group. But it looks like you're getting sales and other people will start to be interested and they like to see other people's reviews on it. Now, a top tip on this is to be consistent. It's all about daily habits that you're going to follow every single day whilst following this system. So, like it says here, successful people um, are just people with successful habits. It's something that we do all the time. Okay, there is no big secret. It's just that they're in a, in a routine with the, the little things. So, on your own group. So, I'm going to go through your group now. So, like we say, you want to post three to five products a day, every day. Now, you can schedule your posts. Uh, some phones, you can do that on your phone. Sometimes you've got to do that off the computer. But if you schedule your posts in advance, you can, you can schedule them for the whole week. You know, I don't know if all devices do that, but I think most do. And at least then you know that maybe on a Sunday you've got nothing to do. Schedule them so that they go out in intervals throughout the day and they stay interacting in your group. Make sure you post into your two to three interacting posts, which again, schedule. You can also get apps that schedule, like Buffer and Hootsuite, things like that. They'll do it for you. You'll also post that on your own timeline as well if you want to keep that happy. Um, advertise your group in other groups. But what we mean by that is don't go randomly posting the link to your group in lots of other groups because um, you can get your link banned. Okay, so advertise the name of your group. Maybe put your link in some of the comments, but try not to overpost the link to your group and get that. So you want to personalize your group, okay? You want it to, to, to stand out, really. You want it, uh, sorry, you can, you can put, you can't see. Yeah, you want it to stand out. So you want yours to be that little bit different. And a good way to do that is with things like uh, lives. Live videos, definitely good. Demonstrations, games, puzzles, free raffles. Um, the live demos. Now with the live demos, you can either do a live with you, of yourself, you could have it pointed at yourself and you could be talking and demonstrating products, or you could just have the camera pointing at the product, you could just demonstrate what the product does. For some things, the catalogue just doesn't do it justice, and especially light up things, you can't really get that across in a picture, so showing it and maybe showing around the room, it might look and stuff, that it really, really works. Something that we think is really important to do is to create a, a relationship with your customers. And a good way to do that is when you get new people, so whether it's people that have been added by friends and family or whether it's people that have requested to join, um, tag them in a post. You can do, again, not all, group, all um, groups will let you do this, but some do. So at the side where it shows you your new members, well, it shows you your team members, it will say how many new members that week. And then it'll say next to it, write a post. And then what that does is it will tag every single person who's joined in that week. And you can, they will feel special that you've tagged them. You'll think they've really gone out of the way to make an effort to tag them. Um, and just, you can start to build a bond, send them a message when people, new people join, send them a link to your catalogue. You know, just build that relationship, get across to them that you're nice and reliable because people want to buy off you not necessarily clean and easy, okay? Another one, as I would say, is post a distributed wanted post in your group. Now, whether you are brand new, you've not got to remember your first day, I really advise you to do this. And for this reason, even if you're not ready to build a team, somebody in your group may look at what you're doing, see that it's an absolutely amazing opportunity and why would they see that we sell great stuff and want to earn some extra money themselves and want to do it. Now, if that's the case, they may well think because you're new that, that you can introduce them to the business. They may go elsewhere and look for someone advertising. Now, I'm sure you'd rather have that person in your team than become um, a competition to you. Okay, especially when they're in your group, you want them wanting to work them together. And your upline will look after them, put them in your team, and sort that out. But it's really important that you do still put that post in there just because we've seen people, the best friends, got to join somebody else because you didn't think that they could be doing this, so it does happen. Um, build up a good rapport and a good reputation with your customers. Ask 
ask for feedback and reviews all the time. Have the review post and have some polls. You can create polls in your group where you can ask people what they want. So today, would you like to see bedding or would you like to see baking or would you like to see cleaning products? Do that and start to see what people, people are interested in. The real life pictures of the products, again, the great reviews, which are great in general because people like to see, you know, that um, what something's really like. Sometimes things can be misleading on a, on a catalogue picture because you made to look bigger or anything. So sometimes people like to see the real life pictures. And this one is really important because I still see this happen a lot. You need to post one picture at a time. It needs to stand out. Now, Facebook selling is completely different to the likes of eBay selling. When someone goes on eBay, they're looking for an item. They'll go in and they'll manually search it. When they are looking on Facebook, they are just generally scrolling through the new, new feeds. And that item needs to jump out at them. They need to be looking along and then suddenly this beautiful lamp pops up and then think, oh, I like that, I'll buy that. Now, they wouldn't, they wouldn't see that if that was in a, a picture with loads of little pictures that's not going to stand out, or an album, so you posted 10 pictures in one go, okay, not going to get seen. So the only way that them pictures are going to get seen is if someone clicks on and flicks through, which most of the time they don't. You know, most people, again, it's about jumping out like so Please make sure your product is standing out. It's okay to have some collages for advertising um, the business, for example. But when advertising a product, it's really important to just have one picture and have, it, have its own place, stand out on its own. So, buying selling sites. Right, okay. So, this is where you're going to find your buyers, and this is where your focus needs to be. Your selling group is going to become your customer base where you only need to sell in six months' time. Until that point, your, your total focus has got to be buying and selling sites and finding customers in them, okay? So try not to make it too much like a website, okay? Try not to make it too professional when you're posting in there. Use the real-life pictures of your car on them groups. They are, will definitely work the best. But you want it to be like the buying from you. You want it to be that you're selling from home. A couple of reasons for that. If you post a real-life picture and someone thinks you're selling it from home, if they like the looks of it, they are more likely to jump up and say, yes, I'll have it, than if you if you were a business advertiser. Because if you were a business, you might look at it and think, oh, get one of them next time. If they think you're selling that from home, they think you've only got one. They'll think that they've got to buy it quick before it sells out. Or, you know, so they're more quicker to say, oh, yes, I'll have that. You don't want to have time to think about it. So when you make it professional like a business, you don't feel sad and look elsewhere. Um, another tip with that is, don't put too much information on the advert either because you want to create them to ask questions. So if you was to put all the description, okay? So okay. Um, sorry, yeah. So if you was to, for example, copy and paste the description of the website, that's the worst thing you can do because it looks too much like you've copied and pasted the description of the website. It's got to be as if you're selling it from home, like you say. But also, you don't want anyone not asking questions. So if you put every little detail, exactly the size, the dimensions, everything, the make, everything, then they're not going to ask any questions. They'll sit and look, they'll weigh it up, they'll make their own conclusions on that, and then they'll may decide to leave it. If they want to know how, how big something is, what it does, what it's made of, then they're going to ask. Then if it's not there, they're going to ask. Now, by them commenting on the post, the one that's really good for your, for your post, your advert's going to get pumped up more. It's going to start, start um, drawing lots of attention from other people who can see that there's lots of questions being asked on the, on the post. Plus, as well, once they started asking the questions and they started getting into that, they're the more likely then to commit to the sale because they've already started asking a lot of questions. So I do think it's really important that you don't put too much information but try, but try to create a bit of a need and a want. Um, you know, an example I often use is the buffet server that we sell. If I just see the, the description from the website posted, buffet server, and told me all details, I would look straight past it because I don't very often do buffets, so it's not something I would want. But when that's changed and they've created a need and a want because they put on there at Christmas, how much easier is this going to make your life? when trying to keep all your veggies warm and you've got everyone sat waiting on this lovely buffet server. 
that suddenly created a need for me that I didn't even know I needed until she pointed that out. I'm now going to go on and buy the buffet service. So try and think that way when you're posting your efforts. Um, again, build that relationship because you want them to buy from you and not from Clean Easy. That is what the customers say. We, we, we tend to have that relationship built. So get organised, use your order forms, have all the contact details read you know, off the customers. Um, find out if the customer would like personal delivery or if it's sent direct. So when you're brand new at this now, the first thing you, you do, all you need to think about is you just want to sell some stuff, yeah, you just want to get some sales. So just advertise your products. Have your order forms ready if they've come yet with your catalogues. If they've not, have a notepad. And if someone wants to buy something, just, just literally take the orders. Find out whether they want it sent direct to them or whether if they're local to you, you're going to do a delivery service or if they're going to pick up from you. You need to find that out straight away, you know, and then if they are local to you, then offer them that delivery service or that pick up free of charge if it's not too far out of your way and you're more likely to get the sale. I would never advise advertising um, delivery co costs on your post. I would never put that on because you're going to put people off. Most people will, will maybe not look at that until afterwards where if you don't know the delivery and then they start asking questions, again, they're more likely to buy. So don't advertise it. If you are only sending items out to the people will pay it, just tell it them in a private message. Okay? Um, have every, all the details written down. Make sure you've got a contact number for them and an address where, you, where you're doing your delivery from so that you know that you can get in touch with them once you've placed that order. So generating more sales, this is something to get some extra ones on top of what you normally do. So always follow up by sending the customer a link to your catalogue. So when someone says that you want to buy something, confirm it, take the details, just say to them, it'll be here next week and I will contact you when it comes, just to give you that bit of leeway to get an afford on for your book sale so that you're not committing to a certain day. And then send them the catalogue link. Say to them, your order will be getting placed on Thursday. If you want to look through, look through the catalogue, if you want anything adding to it, just let me know. I'll pop and it. On delivery, leave them a catalogue. Okay, so if you've got catalogues and you're not putting them out and you're unsure what to do with them, you really haven't got the time to put catalogues out and you've got them through your log and you are giving to your customers. Okay, if you can, what I would do is ask them once you've given a catalogue, can they be added to your online customer base in four weeks? Every four weeks, then even if you built up your catalogue customers through online, go back with them, write the address down, get them in a um, like in the areas so you know where you're going, go and drop them up and and get more sales every week. Um, set sell. I think this is something that does really well. You know, sell items that complement each other so people can buy them all. So you could set a scene, you could have your bedroom, all the lovely, we want to have our lovely bedding sets on and then maybe a lovely lamp and a lovely picture frame, some cushions um, and sell that whole scene and then people then want to start buying it all or the makeup you know maybe put some of the makeup on and create a look sell the whole set again and look to be upgrading them door stop demos on your delivery these are obviously ideal at christmas but at the same time lots of people um do these all year round take something especially things that light up they're really good because you can um, use them as a light to see collecting and get your money out and things like that. But when you take them with you, even if you feel really uncomfortable about doing that, all you're going to say is, oh, look what the company's making me bring. I've had to bring this along to show you because the catalogue doesn't do it justice. You'll be surprised how many they sell. Online events and launches of catalogues. So a good one is, like, for example, the uh, personalised hair lights come out tonight. A girl in my team has got a big launch tomorrow night for that. So she doesn't advertise any products to that catalogue yet. So do like sneaky peeks, like a picture of the front cover with a with a sensor mark going through it to say get ready, exciting new products coming. And then they'll all be posted in the in an event. So post the pictures to the products and she gets lots of sales every time she does it. So that's a really good one. Games and prizes that offer discounts. So you know, if you're going to do giveaways, you're going to do prizes, why not give them 20% off the order? Yeah, you're going to lose your, your commission on that, 
but it's going to boost your sales, it's going to give you the bigger bonus, it's going to get more people buying from you in the first place. Um, right, so that should be part of that other one. So the games and the prizes that offer discount encourage more sales. So now, how to get them? How to get more out of Facebook? We need to pay attention to our Facebook reach. Okay, it's really important. And what that is, it's the number of unique people who see your content. It drives your sales and your recruiting results. Everything on Facebook boils down to your Facebook reach. So this is also giving your interaction group pages will always be seen more. So what we mean by that is interactive groups or pages will always be seen more. So when you've got a group that's doing really well, yeah, lots of people comment on it, it goes on the top of the news feed because Facebook can see that it's a popular group. So you've got to consider these three things as well when posting on Facebook. Educate, entertain and empower. These are the things that Facebook must. So if you're posting things, for example, if you're posting training, you're educating people, so if you're posting in the same page, some training, that's what you're doing. Entertaining, funny videos, you know, there's loads of YouTube videos and things, make people laugh, everyone likes things like that. And empowering, and again, you've got lots of things like the power of positivity videos or, or quotes that are empowering, all this stuff, Facebook likes, we like to see you do more of it. To get good reach, you need to post three times a day every day. Now, this is on your own Facebook. This is not anything to do with any group now. So, if you're somebody who doesn't use Facebook and you want to do this business, you really need to start using Facebook. You need to build that up. So, you need to be posting three times a day. Again, you can schedule these if, you, if it's something that you're not used to doing. Get an app on your phone and schedule the posts throughout your Facebook. So, whether that's just a positive, you know, quote or whether that's a YouTube video or something, which makes, or whether that's a status that you're going out on a picture of your team, whatever it is you want to do, just make sure you're doing that. Now, being social in your group. Okay, so these are the top tips of being social. These are some games that we post in the group, and these work really well. Again, they're not going to necessarily get you to sale. But what they're going to do is they're going to make your group more sociable, more seen, more up there in the eyes of being a popular group in the Facebook world, so they will then show it to more people. Often you find when you're doing these interactions for this when they're going to come in and look at your group as well. So things that people just can't help joining in with. Okay, there's so many of these. Again, in the pin post on Pits for you, along with the top selling items, there's some um, interaction posts as well. So there's lots there for you. Uh, to do things like the polls and the giveaways and different competitions. Um, do this all the time, a couple of times a week. Edit in your group name. Do this. Some people do this every day. I would definitely do it at least once a week. Now, by editing your group name, you don't have to change the name of your group. You can put a smiley emoji, a heart, a kiss, hashtag, whatever you want to do. But what this does is um, it sends out a notification to every single person in your group that you've changed the name and it gets them looking in there. So people might have forgot about your group. You may not see it in, your, in the news feed that often all of a sudden you edit the name and they're like, oh, what group is this? And then we'll go on. So Facebook is like a bank account. Okay, so like you've got the debit and the credit. You've got to give in as much as you take out. Now, posting adverts is taking. Where every time you post an ad, you are taking from Facebook. They want to see you giving back. You've got to be level with this. And by giving back, we mean staying active being sociable, doing review posts, doing recommendation posts, doing check-ins, all these little features that Facebook have, we want you to use them. A big one, one that is something that is really going to help you is going live. The more you go live in your group, and on your page, or in Facebook in general, the more it's going to help your, um, your Facebook stay active because we can all get bans at times and sometimes it can't be helped. You know, lots of us have been here, but there's lots of ways to try and avoid it as best we can, okay? So avoiding Facebook jail do's and don'ts. So do post ads that say, search my group, comes online often. So that's instead of putting the link, okay? Do share videos with a comment. So when we said posting things like funny videos, don't just share the video. You've got to comment as well. So whether that's with a smiley face or not, it has to be unique to you that you posted it. If you don't comment, it's no longer unique to you. You've just shared somewhere else. Um, 
do make sure that you do all the correct levels of activity every day. So make sure you post it three times a day in your Facebook. Make sure you're liking and commenting other people's Facebook and your pictures. Um, always, always ask a prospect to contact you. Don't ever mess, send out message requests. This is how you get in Facebook, Joe. If you send out lots and lots of message requests, you are instantly marked as a spammer. So when people, it's not so much when you're selling because I don't think you do it at a big enough level, but when you are recruiting, you can come across up to 100 leads a day at time. If you were to send 100 people a day a message request to Facebook, it would get shut down. Really important that you get them to contact you. Do have two accounts as a maximum. So don't go and have three, four, five accounts. I have two because Facebook will let you have one for personal use and one for work use. It's allowed to have two, but it's important to keep them both very active because otherwise, if you've just got one for a backup that you don't ever go on, as soon as you start using it, it becomes unusual activity and you be shut down. Also, you can't make up a, an account whilst you're on a ban. So it's got to be done when your account is clear. Okay, and then have two accounts. Maybe not a straight after you've been on a ban, you can maybe give it a bit of time. So don't post ads that involve multiple posts of your link. So this is what we talked about over posting the link. Any link, okay, we just don't over post it. Um, don't bump ads at the same time as posting new ones. So we say don't post any more than six adverts a day. And we say to have them all spread out. So maybe in like three lots of 20 or something. But don't go and post 20 ads and then bump 20 old ads because you've done post it. Okay, you do class it the same. Um, don't over post, so don't do any more than 60 a day, and don't over join selling drinks. 10 a day is a maximum, okay? But if you stick to it 10 a day every day, it becomes usual activity, you can get away with it. Um, start off by maybe joining five at first and keep building that up. Again, don't you PM people about the opportunity, they've got to contact you. Don't open multiple Facebook accounts. Um, don't post in multiple groups using a tool. So there are things like the marketplace where you can go and click 50, 50 um, groups and post. If you use that, it just puts you on the van. I don't even know why they've got it. Or the same as joining, joining groups using the map. You use it, you get a van. So you can't overuse anything. It's like a one-off thing that you can use because you don't expect most people to be selling buying groups, buying selling groups to be selling a lot. So they don't be only there for now and then. So these are my top tips when selling online. So in your own group, you need to keep your products at the top of your selling group that are popular. So if you've got an item that everyone's wanting, make sure that that's all on top. Or if you can, when someone clicks on your group, the first five products that they see, they need to see comments on straight away because otherwise they're giving and just look at it and they'll think, right, no one's interested in that group. No one's commenting on any of these products and they'll just see it. So find popular products and keep them bumped by, by commenting on it. So put a heart or, a, or an X or whatever you want and it keeps it to the top. If you're brand new and you've not sold anything yet, so you've not got a popular product, when you've asked your friends and family to like and comment on some, some things, make sure they're the ones that are at the top of the group. Okay? When you are bumping up these products, make sure you clean up all your bumps. So, for example, if you've got an item that you think just sells dead well and you want to keep it from top of your group all the time, when you put your, your little hair or whatever you're putting on, you need the one before it. Okay, so it doesn't look like someone's come on and says, God, that product looks popular, but 20 people commented on that. When you click the comments, 20 comments of you saying, bum, 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 because that can be even more off putting. So make sure you clean all the others up. Don't post multiple pictures at once. I can't stress that enough. Make sure each product has has its own um, standout ad, okay? Keep an eye on the company top sellers list. We always post it every week in the team matrix group. And if you don't see it, it's always on the EWD email you get on a Friday and it's on the, the DSA. And that's what's sold the most in the whole company that week. So it's always on, on trend items. Again, post the real life photographs of products, even if it's not your taste, you know, when we first started with this, I was really, I really wasn't keen on it because for me, I much like, I like the pictures of the website much better. And if I was personally going to buy, I probably wouldn't buy off one of these buying zone sites and look at the products and think, oh, that, 
I would if it was a brand new one. So don't think what you would think yourself necessarily because you'd be surprised. This is what really works. Taking as much information as you can and take the advice and follow the steps. Be a fun, be coachable. This business can give you anything you want it to give you if you're prepared to work it. Um, just follow the advice and keep going. Um, the best times to post is any time. So get sales all day long, but evenings, early mornings and weekends, all day Sunday as well, just great day. And really important, keep stock, keep check on the stock checker. Because we have items that are very, very popular that will sell out quicker than others. I'd be worried if we didn't have things that sell out. So we've always got to be on the ball to make sure that what we're selling is in stock. Okay, keep checking that as much as you possibly can. Then we've got other selling pl platforms, it's not just Facebook. We've got Spock. Claire Pemberton's doing absolutely brilliant on Spock. So she said she's going to do a training for us at some point for this, but she's selling really well, and I know her team are as well, so that's definitely worth a look at. eBay, again, we've got some great sellers that sell on eBay. Gumtree, there's, you know what, Amazon, there's loads of places that you can sell. You're not limited. We're not like other network marketing companies where we tell you where you can and can't post. You can post where you want. Just make sure that if you're using a platform that charges you, that you're including them fees into your sales so that you're not out of pocket. Now, welcome rewards. When you first get going, in your first um, 60 days, you get some welcome rewards. And your first one is in your first 30 days, you have to do £150 worth of sales. This is then going to give you your first welcome reward. Now, you can either choose 50 catalog or five dropship credit. Five dropship credits are free delivery, okay? Uh, I'd always recommend you get in the catalogue because they're going to give you more sales. Even if you don't want to go out to build the catalogues, you give them to friends, give them to family, give them to customers, you will get you more sales. Your second welcome reward is when you get £600 in sales in the first 30 days. So that's included the 150 you've already got, plus another 450 and that's going to give you your second one. And then you get two. So you can have two lots of catalogues, one of each, or two of the same, or the dropship credits. Then you get another 60 days to do the same again, 600 worth of sales again, and that's going to give you another two. So this can give you a total of 250 catalogues free, which if you were to buy the big catalog kit, give you 250 catalogues, it's around 100 pounds, so it's a really good deal. You're going to get into the catalog for free. Right, so how you earn your money? Well, it all starts with you, okay? So your clean easy is 20% commission, your pay life is 15% commission, and your internet specials is 10%, okay? So let's just say that you have retailed a thousand pounds yourself, okay? So you've hit the 10% mark. If it was all clean easy, you're gonna have a retail commission of 206 pounds, plus a retail bonus of 62, that's gonna get paid directly into your bank, the other is what you're going to take from the commission from the sales straight away. And that's a total income of £268 in the four weeks. If it was all care life, it'd be £155 retail commission with a £47 bonus. So that's £206. So be you know, be worried about that when you're looking at what you're selling as well, because yes, the care life has a lot of nice, pretty things, but the clean easy stuff has some brilliant stuff in as well that will actually pay you more money. Now this is how you can plan what you earn. So, for example, if you were to do £200 of sales in a week, £29 a day. Now, this is all based on the 20% commission. Then you're going to earn from that £165 cash and £50 bonus, £215. Okay? Let's just say you were to do £42 of sales a day, which we can all do £42 of sales. I've seen people do that. Easy. £300 a week, that's going to earn you £248 cash and a £75 bonus, that's £323. Let's say we could sell £142 a day. Now, I know that there's people that could do that. But if you were to do this full time and really focus and go and get them sales and you could get £142 a sale in a day and keep that going, you can earn £1,200 at the end of the month. That's a full time income. Yes, it would be full time hours to do that, but you'd be working for yourself. The opportunity is there for you to be able to earn a full time income for yourself without a big setup fee. Now, if you were to then go on and build a team, this is how you can earn your money. So, this is an example of a, of a gold business, typical gold business. So, this is with you retailing a thousand pounds again in the middle. 
and you've now introduced these people down the side or your friends and some family and a couple of people off your adverts and between you at that month you've you've sold eleven thousand pounds you've shown them how to all do a thousand pound each and you've got eleven thousand pounds now you're now a gold business which means you're at a 24 percent bonus level so you're going to get from that your same retail commission 106 pound that you were getting before no difference but your retail bonus has now gone up from 62 pounds to 150 because you're at higher bonus level so you earn more off your own sales but well, then you've got a team bonus of £877. You've not done any more sales, you've just shown everyone else how you've done what you've done. So that's a total income of £1,200. This is part time work. You can do this by you only retailing a thousand and showing others how to do the same. Again, if it's care life, £927. It's a full time income that you can do part time at home. And this is why we do encourage the team building because it's working smarter, not harder, isn't it? If you still have that time freedom and do that. So, let me go back. That's that's the end for the online induction. You want to just take a minute, Claire? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I just, if anybody wants to ask any questions about the online induction, I think there was a couple of questions in the oh, okay. um, chat. Let me find where's the chat gone. Um, somebody's asked if they how which apps they can use to schedule posts okay so you can schedule posts on your own facebook in your group you set up literally through facebook but you can also schedule for like on your own like on your own um, personal timeline you can use an app called um buffet that's one there was one called food suite um there's a few i would just put into the app store facebook schedule scheduling posts and you'll and i'm sure a few will come up with the free the free apps that you can get okay fantastic and um you know it, it really is just a very simple system it's just understanding the little things that you can do that's going to make a massive difference to getting them extra sales mm -hmm. and not getting yourself into facebook jail so it's just following a few little rules isn't it and just kind mm -hmm. of using yeah. the simple system that we've got as, as everybody could see in the recognition really you know you follow that system you definitely get the results and the results are showing by how many people are achieving welcome rewards and everything else when they first get off to a start so we definitely encourage you to follow that system i think that was fantastically delivered um Emma's got some questions, but the baby's screaming. So, yes, it is recorded, Emma. And by all means, you know, you can contact one of us or your upline, your sponsor, if you do have any questions. But I don't know whether you're new or established. Um, I think Sarah must be your, your um, sponsor. So we do record it so that you can watch it back in the group. So that would be uh, great if you could watch it and then ask any questions from there and it, very interested we'll definitely be putting claire pemberton down selling on spock we're always looking yeah. for new ideas yeah i wrote a few notes there um i think really it's all about adding a little bit of personality um and you know you know adding that little bit of personality having a bit of fun with it as well because that you know people don't just want to be bombarded with sales stuff do they it's just that um, yeah and you've had a lovely comment um grace has put that you make it sound so straightforward to follow so oh, brilliant <laughs> that's what we want keep yeah. it simple <laughs> yeah, exactly. all right brilliant okay are you all right then to carry on mm -hmm. get a drink Okay. okay so I know that seemed well longer than it normally did. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, brilliant. Emma's put that she understands so much more. Now, well, that's that's the idea of plugging into the training, Emma. We try to help you the best we can, giving you lots of top tips and advice. So fantastic, you know, take it away and put it into action. We did do say, I didn't say this earlier, but we do say the more you learn, the more you earn in this business, and it's dead true. Um so um well done um well done claire and now we're going to move on to our 10 pillars training it's time management and planning and so claire's going to run us through some training looking at time management and planning okay thank you right okay so time management and planning so what we're going to go through today is the attitudes of time the mystery of time how to be the master of time 
seven practical action steps and priorities, deciding what you're worth, the mental bank, written plans, daily schedules and to-do lists, how to plan your pay, mastery tips, plan do with you, and is what you do with, and it's what you do with your time. Okay. So first of all, there are four attitudes towards time management, and in Jim Rohn's book Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness, he talks about the different types. So we've got the drifter mentality, and life is as unstructured as it can possibly be. With people that are in the drifter mentality, we don't you know what they're doing from one minute to the next um, it can all seem a bit chaotic and then you've got the nine to five time manager who they're people that work for people they usually work for the boss and um, everything's done around nine to five and um, they have all the headaches and the glory and the reward sorry letting them have all the headaches the glory and the rewards yes so the person they work for you just want to go to work get the work done come home and have an easy life and that's fine if that's what some people want to be and then you've got the workaholics there's never enough work they're task oriented they're, um, they're not result oriented so they just want to be doing what they're doing they're always busy not always productive though and not not making the most of their money okay then we've got the enlightened time number they there are a lot of, there's a lot of time for everyone aspects of life Time to dip, time to work, and time to work smarter, not always longer, and multiple their productivity. Okay. So, this is what we kind of have with our time, don't we? It's here today, it's gone tomorrow, and how do you spend it? Well, we all tend, we all have the same 168 hours in a week. No one has more time than others. Some of us are busier than others, some of us are not do as much as others. And all that, but we've all got the same time, which is what we do with it, isn't it? So, the, this is the average person with an average job. We tend to work 40 hours a week in the job. Five hours will be traveling, 56 hours of sleeping, 40, 14 hours of eating, seven hours personal care, four hours shopping, and five hours of housework. That's 131 hours. So, guess what? We've still got 37 hours left. That's like plenty of time for a job isn't it again to fit in another business around it so we people say oh i can't fit this in because i work or because of these commitments that i have but we can all do that we can all fit it in somewhere if we need to pocket the time correctly so how to be the master of time well you need to track the time you spend on your activities that you do so if you are someone that is struggling that does say I don't have time for this. I'm so busy. I've got this, this, and this. Then start tracking it. Write down what you do hour by hour. And it'll start to make you realize the time that you waste as well when we do this. So start making the right choices. Be personally responsible. Decide if it's going to be, it's up to me. If you want to make something happen, no one else is going to do it for you. It's totally down to you. And you have to make it happen yourself. Just take responsibility. If one thing to change, we have to change that. Don't we? There's no other way around it. Now, this is what we have in our um, self-journal um, and gold planner that we use, what, that Helen's done for us. And on here, we, we've got no reason why we can't fit everything in that we need to fit in with this because it, it tracks us all the way. It's got everything down from posting on your own profile three times a day, what we say you need to do, editing your group name once a week with interaction posts, you're cataloging, you're putting your books out, you're joining your selling groups, your recruitment ads, the warm market, speaking to people, all of this stuff is in there. So you've got no reason to miss any of it out because it, as long as you've been ticking off when you're done, then it's done. You've also got your planner there from when you get up in the morning until you go to bed. You can fit in, you can write down everything you can do. If you do work, fill out where you need to work and then you work everything else around it. There's a copy of that on the matrix group if you've not got it by the way and you want to use that. Um, so daily action, we need to write down your daily seven practical action steps to, for the day. We need to kind of have that in place every morning. So what are income producing activities? This is something we need to think about. Maybe things like watching the telly might have to be shortened. I understand that people have certain things that may not be income producing, but are just as important to them. And that's fine, but it's kind of having that balance, isn't it? And having that little snap 
of time where you have a bit um, of telly to wind down or a bit of going to the gym or listening to music or whatever it is that you do, still fitting that in, but maybe not as much. So when we're looking at income producing activities, it's things like sell retail, posting adverts, posting catalogs, replying to adverts, collecting catalogs, delivering the product, building that customer relationship, it's all part of it. And then when you're building a team, the sponsoring activities is creating leads and inquiries. Providing opportunity, information for the opportunity, and you know, arranging appointments, speaking to people on the phone, following them up, coaching and supporting your team. These things are income producing activities that need to be prioritized on your to do list every single day. Now, do you struggle to keep focus on key activities? Because Helen has this great mental bank. Not that she's used, and I think it's a really good idea for people to follow. So, say it's appointments, so you're on the phone to people. Let's just say if you're paid a hundred pounds for every appointment, you give it, and you probably do more, wouldn't you? Know how many would you manage to fit in if you were getting paid a hundred pounds for each one? As we are not paid directly for the activities in this business, it's hard to stay motivated sometimes because it's easy to do, but it's easy not to do. We can put things off, we can say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it later. But if you were getting paid a hundred pounds a time, you're gonna do it now, aren't you? So keep a mental bank diary log and reward yourself with the money and watch your bank your bank balance grow. So every time you do an appointment, you write that hundred pounds in and, and give yourself goals, you know, to keep tracking how much you're gonna earn. How much are you worth per hour? What have you decided that your worth is? Write that down. Write down how much you'd love to be earning um if you were fulfilling your full potential. And my full potential, I, I am earning, and go and have that, go get checked. That's going to be your goal. That's going to be driving you, what it is that you want. Now, this is a typical part-time catalog retail plan. Okay? So we've got in here, um, dropping off 150 catalogs Friday, collecting them in on the Saturday, with a slip telling you about tomorrow, and going back on Saturday for the stragglers. Okay? You can see here through the week, you've got another drop, and then you've also got your deliveries, you're collecting your stragglers, your round robin where you're going to go back around and collect stragglers from the door, and then bagging up your orders. And then you've got to have a plan because all these things, some people will think it's just a drop, but what about placing your orders? You're going to get that done on time, you're going to get them bagged up on time, getting your orders out. So it all has to come into your plan. Now, this is a typical full time retail plan. So you can see there's a lot more hours going to this. But let me show you this now. This is a customer base retailing plan. Now, and you drop right back down to part time. So when you're full time retailing, your, bl your blanket dropping, then you're going to build up at this customer base. And after six months, you only go back to your customers. And this is where it becomes so much easier. This is where you earn around 20 to 30 pounds an hour just from your catalog customer base. So yeah, you're going to work hard for the first six months. But then it's going to drop right back to part time. I want you going to three or four hours time, and then this is it forever. Then you've got this just part time with good money coming in. So it's short time effort for a long time gain. Now it says our plan, but this is actually Andy and Helen's plan, not my plan. But this is the retailing plan. So they've got their customer base, base out on there on the Friday. Um, they take Will flying in with them, they do the deliveries and the stragglers. You do the team phone calls of the night, so everything's in different colours, so you can see how they work it. You know, they've got football with the kids, that's a big priority, so that's blocked out for the day, and that's great, that's what we do. Then you've got appointments, kit issues, collecting the customer in, um, taking Will everywhere, <laughs> um, all the different things that they've got going on, karate and things like that, bagging up the orders, preparing the catalog. I thought that said karaoke, then but it says karate. <laughs> I thought you were going off, <laughs> I going off doing karaoke then. But they've got all this stuff going on and they still fit this in. Helen and Andy retail big every month. You've seen their figures, what they do, which pays them full time income regardless of the team. So, you know, it's, it's really good to just have a plan, be organised with it, and you can do whatever you, whatever you want with it then and fit it in around your life. Okay. So this is back to the. Um, off the tracker thing in the in the journal. So this is one of the things down the side that we keep track on when we're doing our retail activity, our team building activity. 
and our personal development, which is really important. 10 pages a day of personal development. If you were to do 10 pages a day, every day throughout the year, by the end of the year, you'd like to do an in the university, you'd know all kinds and imagine how much more wiser as a person you'd be, how more developed, how you'd be able to help more and more people grow your income, grow their income, and grow your business. So if you keep doing that every day, listening to CDs, listening to YouTube training, attending the Zooms and the webinars and getting your team on them, and you'll soon see your business grow. So we need you to grab Let me just read this again. We need to figure out how much do you want to earn? How much do you need to retail if you want to earn a certain amount of quick? How many catalogs do you need to play out on average to get the type of order that you want? How many people do you need to sponsor to get your income? This is um, a retail without a team chart, like I showed you in the induction. It's all on here so you can, can see how much weekly catalogs are, weekly orders, how much you learn exactly and figure it out, plan what is it you need so you need to, so you know exactly what you need to do to get what you want. Okay, again we've got the business structure that we've gone through on the other on the online induction, but it showed you here the type of income you can get by building your own team. It doesn't have to be anything massive, you can still earn a full you can earn a thousand pounds a month, a great income, very part time. Or you can go on and start building even bigger, you know. You can get lots of little people building businesses as well. So even if everyone's just doing a bit, everyone's doing a couple of hundred pounds, lots and lots of people doing that, that is something that can be done really part-time. If everyone's just selling a bit with a friend and family, selling a bit online, selling a bit in work, imagine how this can just spread out if everyone, everyone does a bit and recruits. So you can build your income up by doing that as well. So... Deal with your business before your challenges, okay? You can't change things that you have no control over. So sometimes things get in the way, but we've got to make sure that we're committed to certain things. But at the end of the day, if you had a job and you work for a boss and there was something like the kids had a football match, yeah? Yeah, you want to go to the football match and it's the whole idea of having the flexibility of the business, but sometimes there might be the odd time where you may have to miss a bit of it or take the work form to work with you and do a bit there because sometimes we, ha we haven't got any choice. It's, it's, we don't get paid, it's our business, so you've got, got to kind of work with that still. Um, so learn to say no sometimes. Delegate activities like cleaning. Helen or Helen and Andy employ the cleaner so that they have more time to do that. Um, you know, just get the kids doing it <laughs> or something. But just delegate that out and then when you work, work. Be on it, be committed to what you're doing, and then when you do play, play, have fun. I think it's really important to, to be mindful of where you are, are at at that time. When you switched off, you switched off, and when you're on it, you're on it, and then everything becomes much more productive then. Um, know thyself, know your your um, productive time and your available time. I know I'm the most productive early in the morning, and um, that's when I'm better for me. I can get much more done straight away when I get up. So and it's just knowing yourself what works well for you. For other people, it's when the kids have gone to school and you've got that bit of time or there could be a little gap where they're in nursery. But make sure you do as much as you can. Things that are on your priority list for the more inconducive in that sort of productive time. Ask yourself, is this an income producing activity and is it the best use of my time? So sometimes, especially with the online side, Facebook can be very distracting Okay, we could be flipping, we could be doing some stuff and then get distracted by some posts and some videos and people chatting and and we're just pulling ourselves back, isn't it? And just thinking like, oh, I could be doing this now, I could be generating leads now, I could be, you know, something that you could be doing that's going to be making you more money. I think we've always got to be mindful of that. Take five minutes at the start of your day. Okay, so why? So so know what you're doing. Okay, um, and getting it in a logical order. So sometimes, let me say, what's, the, what's that book, eat that frog, get the worst thing that you want to do done first. Get it out of the way, because otherwise, if you have that later, and you're putting it off on all day, and putting it off all day, it keeps it in a good, good vibe, does it? Either you want to know that you feel accomplished once you start feeling that achievement, 
feeling quite early on. It puts you in a roll for the rest of the day. Um, take five minutes at the end of the day. So why? To review what you've achieved. Make yourself feel successful when you're going to bed. Go to bed knowing that you've, you've done everything you need to do and reward yourself on the activity and not the results. So as long as your to-do list is ticked and your tracker sheet is ticked, then you can go to bed feeling like you've really achieved something because you've done the work. Now, whether you sold anything or got someone to join your team is irrelevant because you will do, and then you will get the sales. It will snowball. You've got to feel good about doing the, the activity first. Take time to a board meeting. You know, maybe sit down with your partner or by yourself if, you, if you're on your own with it and just know the type of thing that you want. Um, except for the weak and save arguments. So know what everyone wants, know what you think you want and, and get that done so that you're not, you're not bickering about who's doing what. It's just done for you. There's no point doing the same things and getting the same result. If you want things to change, you have to change. So what you're going to do, you've got to go and change. It's the only thing that we can do. And it's something that we always have to keep bringing ourselves back to. If we start slipping into our old habits, We've got to keep reminding ourselves, do I want to change? Do I want my life to change? Yet we'll stop slipping into the old habits that's going to keep you in the same old situation that you're in. Because we are where we are in life because of things we've done in the past. So if we carry on doing them same things, we carry on being in the same place that we're in. So if we want it to change, we've got to change that somewhere along the line. So operate from the plan and not from your thoughts. So always have it written down somewhere. Okay, have that plan, have that daily list. Do what you can at night and do that one more thing. So when you think you're done, just, just stretch yourself and do one more. Um, do get up out of bed earlier. One hour a day is an extra set, seven hours in a week. You got up an extra hour a day early. Um, do get a sense of urgency. We want this and we want this, but find a reason why um, and push for it. You know, I was having... I was having a chat with Rishi before on the phone, and it's finding that reason why you're doing this and what's going to be your driving force behind you because everyone's got different driving forces behind them. For some people, they need the money now. Some people, it's nothing about the money. It could be something else. And finding that something that's going to drive you will give you that sense of urgency why you want to get this done and quick. Um, do more if you want more. Don't put things off. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. This is something that I think is like really um, weird with me because if I ever put something off, there'll always be something that will bite me on the bone why I should never put it off. Something will go wrong. So I can't put anything off now because I know that if I say I'll do that tomorrow, there'll be like, I don't know, a thunderstorm that'll stop me from doing something. So just try not to put things off till tomorrow because you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. Everything could be completely changed. You've got to just do it while it's there. Um, review to ensure that you're seeing time effective. So, like we say, plan, do, and review. Not every, we might write a plan out and it might totally not go how we want it to go. It might just be totally rubbish. So, we need to review that all the time and think, well, that's not working. Let's try this. Let's try this. And I think if you could, as long as you can be flexible and keep adjusting and understanding that maybe that didn't work, but not any reflection on you and don't take it personally just move on till you find the right thing that does work then we can all be more productive and, and find a better way so i can't see this one so to earn more money you need to learn more don't we so these are some great books that um the dave o'connor the, the network marketing champion champion that's our been our book of the month and people are doing really well with that book. It's a brilliant book. It's changed a lot of things. Well, the seven strategies for wealth and happiness, uh, eat that frog, and time management for manic mums. I think they're all one that we could all start with right away, really, because I think they'll be great for everybody. Um, yeah, definitely. So, time is like a river. We cannot touch it the same water twice because the flow that has passed will never pass again. Enjoy every moment. That's a lovely quote, that isn't it? <laughs> but it's so true. If time goes in the blink of an eye, and we can all look back and think that we wish we could have done stuff. But I'm sure we'd had much rather regret something had done than something had not done. I'd never want to have regrets wishing had done things. If you've tried it, it's not working. That's all right. At least you tried it. So, what 
it's what you do with your time. So we can all look busy, but are we busy doing the right things? Income producing activities, retailing or chatting with prospects. Choose to be 100% responsibility for your own life, your business. Eliminate all of your excuses. Embrace the fact that you are free by your choice, as long as you, you assume personal responsibility for them. It's time to make the choice and just take control. So time management is almost better time, so we'll use it wisely and build a great future. There you go, thank you. <laughs> right. Oh, that was brilliant, Claire. So, no, it's not easy sometimes. I know some of that was our slides and stuff. So, no, it's not easy sometimes when you're doing a training from somebody else's rope. But I was just going to say, when it's when it's someone else's, and I'm thinking, ah. Oh. No, I when I did your training, it was really, really weird. A couple of yeah. weeks ago, when you were away, and I stepped in and did yours, and it was like really weird. But what I love is that actually we we all know the same stuff, and you know what you were saying is what I say, and what you say is what you know it was it was really really good so great training tonight loads of tips uh for everybody i hope you've all took loads and loads of notes does does anybody want to ask any questions there's a few things coming up in the post i don't know just a bit of feedback or any questions amazing lovely feedback oh, okay <laughs> Brilliant. Does anybody want to ask any questions? You can unmute yourself if you want to. Ask a question, be brave enough. Um, we don't bite. Or does anybody want to type something in the chat and we'll read the question out for you? I don't think I've ever talked so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was never going to end. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard we're going to be sorting out a rotor um to get everybody a little bit more involved over the next couple of weeks sharing a little bit of this so anybody wants to volunteer themselves for some training then please feel free oh great she's a whole squeaky <laughs> <laughs> Grace, you sound like you're on a helium balloon. What you? The wine. What's going on? That again, Grace. It sounds like she's been sucking helium or something. <laughs> 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 Oh, does this sound like a little trip more? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> on the planet, you ever feel like you are missing out loads of things? <laughs> Things are everything that needs to be done in a day um, and you know sometimes things don't